This is the We Are ND Nation podcast, season number four, episode number three. I am Evan J. Thomas. With me always is my lucky old companion, Dennis Stover. And on today's show, we'll be recapping week zero, the 42 to three victory over Navy. I actually changed that in the thing. I don't know why. We have Sam Hartman is the best Notre Dame quarterback since who? I don't know. We'll get into that. What to expect this week versus Tennessee State and our favorite segment that Dennis loves to play so much. The name that <laughs> ND player. But this year we have it a little different. We're doing multiple choice. This is going to be a good one this week. So I like the defensive questions. And I got another defensive one for you. But nice. here we go. I'm going to introduce this one woman, one of our favorite guests so far. A world traveler. She's been all over the pond the past few, like, week or so. She was in Ireland for the Notre Dame Navy game. She is a contributor to OneFootDown.com. She is an author of Echoes from Notre Dame, among other books. And she is our first two-time, two-time guest. Welcome Woo! to the show, Lisa Kelly. Thank you. Thanks for having me. First two-time guest. Yes. I mean, that's Indeed, an man, accolade that's... that nobody can say. But it's awesome. You. Reoccurring. It's like we have a theme. Reoccurring. We got to get around once a year. Yes. So how you doing? Oh, how was Ireland? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, how was Ireland? Ireland was amazing. It was kind of a whirlwind, but I'm <laughs> so glad I went and traveled with eight former football players and it was amazing <laughs> oh so you went on that trip with with whom who all did you go with did you go with Irv and we, did. we had Lee Becton Anthony Fasano Mike Golick wow. Irv Smith Ryan Grant Garen Bible Greg Bell I saw wow. Brady Quinn. I mean, life is good. That's awesome. <laughs> your cat is not going to leave you alone. <laughs> no. Oh. She is so happy I am home. Oh, I, I bet. bet. So what's oh. your cat's name? I think we talked about this. This is Shadow. Shadow. Oh. Okay. Cute little we, Shadow. But Shadow, we got two guests this week. <laughs> we got Shadow and, Kel and Lisa. I mean, who's going to be the most popular one? It probably might be Shadow. Right? New to this week, I we'll know. have Shadow pick. <laughs> which who's gonna win she'll put her paw on a helmet and then right. we'll decide who wins <laughs> like the cards against humanity cat <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so <laughs> while you were in notre dame obviously you got to hang out with these guys did you have a favorite place that you went to while you were there besides the game obviously the game was the main attraction it was fun so we spent two days in belfast and one day in Derry, and then three days in dublin i really liked Derry. i'd never been to northern ireland before we were at a pub one night hanging out with the locals and it was just so cool to like talk to people. The one girl was like a sheep farmer and Lee Becton was like, oh, I have questions. Like, <laughs> we're, we're gonna be here. <laughs> it just was really cool to hang with the local people. We got to do a lot of events. We met an Irish rugby team one night. We met an Irish American football team in Dublin. So it was really cool to kind of, our tour guide did a great job of really getting us a chance to meet the local people. I met two Lord Mayors and wow. met, I met the Lord Mayor of Belfast and the Lord Mayor of wow. Derry. So it just was kind of a different type of tour package and I, I definitely will do it again. <laughs> I'm just She's watching Shadow just kicking your ass. I know. The whole, She's telling me. The whole time you're talking. It's like it's like whack, whack, whack. Like, I love you. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> I love you. Get off the damn desk. We need to talk here. So we, I also saw that you guys went to the Guinness um tour too. We oh, did she, and we back. toured she's back. <laughs> we toured Tealing Whiskey. So I had toured Jameson before. Teeling was really good. I think I have a new favorite Irish whiskey. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Delicious. So I also learned. Did you see Joe you Montana? Know, what what did you say? Did you see Joe Montana? Because he's the, you know, doing all the Guinness I commercials. Saw him, but I didn't like didn't get to interact yet. Yeah. We I saw him on the field. Awesome. All um, right. So speaking of Joe Montana, I pulled this up to Dennis the other day during the game. They had a graphic on the screen while they were showing him, saying he was a five-time Super Bowl champion. Yeah, it's wrong. He's four-time. Five-time. He's not. And I hate to say it. I wish he was. 
But yeah. Peacock, get your shit together, first of all. Yeah. NBC, yeah. Or that NBC, that was a whatever. really Peacock. bad production. It was uh, bad. Oh, and wow, I'll get into that bad. other mother effer that was the uh, one of the announcers during the game that was absolutely horrible. Who, uh, Ian Garrett. Eagles, Garrett. Oh yeah, that guy is a. Oh my he God. should not be a color commentator. <laughs> so let's let's hear more from Lisa. I want to hear yeah. more about like the fun stuff that you did, like besides the tours you did, all that you met the uh, lords. I mean, that's just epic to begin with. So when you got to the game, like how do, how was that atmosphere? Because almost forty thousand people in Ireland, you're one of them. 40,000 people from the U.S. traveling. crazy. Like, they had mass in the morning, and it was thousands of people went to mass. They closed Dame Street and turned it into Notre Dame Street. So I don't know if you've seen the pictures of, like, just Mm -hmm. the masses of people. And so we had a tailgate event, like, in a pub that was really cool. Um, Allison Hayes from ABC 57, she broadcasted live from where we were which was really cool um you know got to hang out with the guys and then we kind of pub hopped our way to the stadium Um, of course it was raining but the stadium is kind of cool because it kind of curves over so the seating is pretty much under cover it's just the field that got rained on so I mean it was nice to not sit and be soaking wet in the rain you know (laughs) Gotcha. Yeah, because that's a that's a the pitch that's used for uh, soccer, right? Football. Yeah. I think that's a rugby. Stadium, oh, rugby stadium. Okay. I, oh, I, could okay. Be wrong. I didn't know what yeah. stadium yeah. It was. Okay. Yeah, I think Aviva is rugby. rugby. I think Pro- Crokey Park is maybe. I, see. I don't know. <laughs> and you were saying before we went live, so you had a little issue getting home. So oh my gosh, I had little, issues uh, getting there. I had issues getting animal, home. automobiles day. I had issues. Yeah. So my flight on the way there, my first flight was like six hours late leaving oh, because God. of maintenance. They had to give get us a new plane. So I flew to New York the day before I flew to Ireland, which was so good because I would have missed my connections. Mm-hmm. Had it so like it took me two days to get there. And then on the way home, my flight was late leaving Dublin. I missed my connection in Newark. It was the last flight of the day, of course. So then I had to spend the night in Newark, you know. Yeah, you should have, I was uh, here, could have met for a drink. (laughs) For sure. I know. I was just, I was so tired. I just wanted to get a hotel, go to bed. I bet, yeah. So you got home Tuesday, correct? Yeah. So you've had basically 40 hours to get home. Plus you had your husband's birthday. Happy birthday. Yep, that was yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. So. That's why yeah. she couldn't do the show wow. yesterday. That's why she got it. Well, that, that is a little more important than uh, that. I like, that, I've been gone for 10 show. days. I can't skip his birthday. That would no, be not at all. <laughs> not at well, all. That's wonderful. So that's I'm I'm so jealous because I wanted the last couple of years to go. I'm broke, so I'm not the type of guy that can just fly to Ireland. So I got to live through you and Lee and Chris Zorch being on the field and seeing everybody having the blast. I'm hoping. So it seems like they they did it what it was supposed to be 2020 when they were originally supposed to go. But right. COVID but damn it, put yeah. it off for this year. So are they going to be doing another one in 2028 or when are they looking to do it? Rumor, rumor has it it's going to happen much sooner than that. Oh, they're going to plan the another trip? travel that is and the amount of people they got, why not? Yeah, I'm hearing like three or four years out. Ooh, oh, is it going to be Navy again? Navy again, yeah. Gotta be. Seems like the only so next year. I think it's Florida State and Georgia Tech. I don't know if they've scheduled like the year after that, but yeah. So they're doing college football is doing a game in in Ireland every year now. Yeah, because last year was was Northwestern. Northwestern. It was Northwestern. Interesting. Who did they play last year? Was that Wisconsin or what game was that? Nebraska, Northwestern. Nebraska. Did anybody even watch that? Well, but here's the thing, like Nebraska traveled, Northwestern doesn't. And like mm-hmm. next year, Florida State will travel, but Georgia Tech's not gonna travel. Oh. Yeah. You know, they need I mean, of course Notre Dame traveled better than Navy did, but obviously I guess all they need is one really good team to travel, you know. Hmm. But that's true. I mean, then then it kind of makes it feel more like a home game for that team. 
So yeah, Florida State, yeah. that makes sense. And it would be more of their fans there and the 16 Georgia Tech fans that show up. So we'll see how. Right. <laughs> All right. Ready to talk about the game because obviously you were there and 42 to three. I mean, I think Dennis picked it. What did you say? 47? I said 48, 17. 48, so they got 17. the field goal. I was like, I don't know why I picked 17. But yeah. And I don't know why they I did kick 40. a field goal. I think I said 44 to nine. So I was kind of close. And I know uh, Alan said 50 to 20. Yeah. So we were all within range, except defensively, we weren't really that. And that defense kind of shut down Navy really well. So Dennis, I'm going to start with you. What was your take out of uh, the game? Like, what did you see that kind of sparked your interest in everything? Uh, it was a good game. Um, they still got a, make some tackles. There was a couple missed tackles, I think. Um, and uh, early on, I mean, early on, I'm sure like, cause they travel, you know, it's a, a long flight and they're tired and first game jitters, I'm sure. So that, you know, that first drive, uh, the defense was, you know, they, they, they drove, I mean, they had a chance to actually, I don't know if they got in scoring range, but they, they held obviously um, the linebackers played all right. You know, I'm not, I'm not drinking Kool-Aid yet because it's Navy. And that's the way we should beat Navy every year, honestly. If Notre Dame keeps recruiting and develops like they should, I mean, it shouldn't even be, you know, I'm not. Yes, it was a great game. It was good to see uh, uh, someone under center and actually make decisions and make throws and, and do the right thing. Uh, yeah, it was great. That was that was really nice and all the running backs and everything too. So that offensive line is ridiculous. That's Sick. I'm again, it's Navy. It's like you should push them cats around. You should just utterly just which they did. So I'm not getting. And again, this is it'll be another. I'm glad they're doing it this week or this year with uh, instead of coming out against and opening up against Ohio State. Um, let's get some. You know, why can't we schedule cupcakes and stuff too early on? You know, I, enough is enough. You know. So, so I'm gonna yeah. some stats real quick on the game before we get to Lisa and what she thinks. Uh, we had Sam Hartman. He was uh, 19 to 23 for 253 yards and four touchdowns. I think he tied a record that also included Ron Paulus and Jack Cohen. Mm -hmm. Like call for the most touchdowns to start a career at Notre Dame. Rushing, he had 32 overall carries for 199, 191 yards and two touchdowns. Defensively, Navy had 48 rushes for 126 yards. So Pretty you good. talk about a shutdown of uh defense. Lisa, what did you see? What 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 part of the game did you like the most out of what you saw the first week of Notre Dame against Navy? I love seeing Sam Hartman. I mean, I think our team has been missing, like we've had great running backs and tight ends and all these pieces, but have never had that final piece of the puzzle, which is a quarterback. I think we have a big time quarterback this year. I also kind of like to see how he spread the passes around. I feel like last year we passed to Michael Mayer over and over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. And I think in our first game, we really showed that we have a great depth, right? and just throw it to everybody, like give everyone a shot. Why don't you just say that? Cause I just looked, he had nine receivers catch passes. That yeah. Great. Like why, why we, we had a lot of these guys last year. Why were, why were we not doing this um, before? Because the lollipop kids couldn't see over the. Drew Pine didn't bring his soapbox to stand on to throw over the line. <laughs> I know. I mean, Sam Hartman has the stature. He's got the Skill, like, he's got the eyes, the beard, the up. hair. He's got it all. I mean, he yeah. should. He's 24. He's, I mean, <laughs> sexy he was, Sam put it on. Hair. He is kind of dreamy with that beard and hair, right? He should get some uh, shampoo uh, hair, NILs. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. The other guy I have to say, too, which my girlfriend was fawning over, was Navy's coach and his amazing gray beard, too. And his. Oh, yeah. He's a sad. She's like, oh my God, who is that guy? I'm like, what? Oh, hey. Yeah. You're like, hi, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sitting right next to you. That's okay. She likes him and Lee and Chris. So, she, you know, she loves them all. But what can you say? So, yeah, that I mean, that game just with Sam leading that offense, and you can tell he's a six-year quarterback just by his poise in uh, 
playmaking. I mean, he was looking down the barrel of a gun all the time. He got hit a couple times where he just stood there and just winged it. He did that one little rollout to the left where he hit um, the one wide receiver for the touchdown. What was his last name? Great house. So he hit him for that. But yeah, he just looked really good and poised. And yes, it was Navy. And yes, this week is against Tennessee State. But if you can consistently do that and then do it against the big names, that, that's what we're looking for. I think my biggest, uh, what I was most excited about, my biggest takeaway from the game is they played freshmen and it was awesome. Right? No, keep playing those kids. They're, 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 <laughs> I just, I never understood that about BK. It's some, I just, some stupid, I don't know, just archaic. Old school. I guess play the these big kids. The question I have is, you know, is Angeli going to be the guy that follows in Hartman's footsteps, or are we going to be that team now that picks up a fifth year quarterback every year? Every year? Like, well, I next hope not. Year isn't we'll never recruit a quarterback then. Who's going to come? Kenny Minchie will transfer. We got Carl transfer. I think that would be foolish. You got to develop too. Yeah. I mean, in a year like this, yeah. Because again, BK. I mean, who did he recruit? Gunnar Keel and 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 uh, who was the other big? Oh, Jer- Jerkovich. And those guys obviously didn't pan out for anything. You know, I, yeah. I, for anyone, <laughs> not even. Oh, so I, I like I'd like to see a development at least once. You know, so we can have uh, maybe a quarterback for two or three years versus one every other. You know, one every year. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So now that that game's over, we're one and zero going into week two, and we're about to go into a break. And you know what Dennis loves to do? He loves to play this game. He just does. He tells do. me every week how much he just loves it. And um, he's like, hey, maybe one day I should do this to you. You should. You should come up with a good one for me. Come up with a good one. We could. You could turn it around on me. So you ready to play? Let's yeah, yeah. Know, former ND player. I gotta get like pumped with this. I gotta get my inner do some uh... McAfee. Screen stuff. I oh, can, yeah. Is that what he does? I don't know. I just, you know, I know you don't really <laughs> like him and I do. So that's why I'm. All you got to do is just wear a, a sleeveless shirt with and a I suit jacket. I talk like this when I started going. So, you know, with kind a suit of- jacket that's too small. So I look, <laughs> so I look swole. <laughs> so he does look swole. All right. So you ready to go? Here's your most. Yes. Yes. He is a defensive end. He played two years as a starter from 2005 to 2006. 90 total tackles, 30.5 tackles for loss, and 19 sacks in his career. Your options, here we go. Victor Abiyamiri, Capron Lewis Moore, Lewis Nix III, and Stefan Tuitt. I gave you some good ones there. Yeah, you did. (laughs) I think I have it. And they all kind of played about the same time, so that's the fun part. Yeah. So we're gonna take, have to give me the years of it on the break back. Of the oh the years that he played 2005 to 2006. Yeah, right. Thanks. All right. So we're gonna take a quick break. We got Lisa Kelly here, the two-time, two-time first ever guest here. We got Dennis Stover. I am Evan J. Thomas. This is the We Are Indian Nation podcast. And we're gonna take about a 30-second break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back to the We Are ND Nation podcast. Evan J. Thomas, Dennis Stover, our guest, Lisa Kelly. How are you guys doing? All right, good. good. Super. Good. good. So we, before the break, we did uh, the name that former Notre Dame player, or ND player, as I always say, and we're going to go over who that person was without giving the name until Dennis gets to do his multiple choice. So here we go. Played defensive end at ND from, and was a starter from 2005 to 2006. 90 total tackles, 30.5 tackles for loss, 19 sacks in his career. Your options, Victor Abiyamiri, Capron Lewis Moore, Lewis Nix III, and Stefan Tuitt. Dennis? I'm going to go with A, Victor Abiyamiri. Yes. Nailed it. Got it finally. One for um, one. Because Cap, I was like, is it Cap? 
because even before you started saying the names, I was like, is it Cap? But then I was like, no, Cap played later. So yeah, he's too young. Cap, Nick, yeah. two, it all were basically on the same on team. the same team. Yeah, that's why I was like, Miri no, no, it's got to be Avi Amiri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice man, good one. That was a good one. Yeah, I was nice. trying to get you with that one, but no, it worked out. So I missed a little part before we uh, went to break. Wanted to talk about sexy Sam Hartman, and is he's the is that best? Called? Is that what he's being called, sexy Sam Hartman? A lot of people are saying that, but I like saying wow. that just because he's he good should looking. do like a Joe Namath thing, like Joe Namath did back in the day, like the Broadway Joe, like almost naked. I mean, that would be a good nil too. I mean, he could go up to Susie Culver and go, "Can I cast you?" <laughs> I mean, he could do that too. Remember so that one? I'm gonna start with Lisa. <laughs> that was a very awkward scene. So uh, Sam Hartman, I want to go with Lisa on that. He is the best quarterback to start at Notre Dame since who, in your mind? Brady Quinn, totally. So nobody else between that time. I mean, who are you going to say? Jimmy Clausen, maybe? Jimmy Clausen didn't. I mean, he was great. He just threw stats, though. He never – maybe it's because he didn't have a defense. And um, – I don't know. I have PTSD of Jimmy Clausen at USC <laughs> in the red zone. Four yes. plays to get in and couldn't score. Like, couldn't score. I can't put Jimmy Clausen in <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of gonna agree with you on the leaving Jimmy Clausen out in that little uh, little little pick there. So, all right, Dennis, who do you have? I mean, I it's gotta be it's gotta be Brady Quinn too. I mean, who else are you gonna say? Deshaun Kaiser, as far as an he athlete was? and like you know, Deshaun. I like Deshaun Kaiser. He's to me, he was Brian Kelly's best quarterback. I mean, people might say Everett Golson, but Everett Golson needed Tommy Reese to bail him out a couple games, so. Now, and I know Dennis likes to get on me when I say this, but Ian Book to me was still really – Yes, he did. I know he didn't win the big, big game. He didn't game. do a he won damn game. thing. Okay, against a, it's a weak schedule, which he should – they should win those games. Please. So you're right. I mean, he's got the numbers. He's uh, got the- I don't care about stats. Ask Dan Marino if he wants stats or a Super Bowl. He wants a Super Bowl. I bet he'd say, I would take a Super Bowl. Exactly. You know? I just won a national championship. It's been what 38 years now we're going on. Enough is enough. Yeah, we're oof. it's ridiculous. Get Swarbrick out of there. Let him do whatever they want. Pay those we're kids and away. let's we're go. Less than a year away now. So yeah, we, let's we pay the in. kids and let just get them in. The new AD coming in graduated in my class. Yeah. All right. So we got really? somebody our age that's coming in. 93, fine. yeah. We don't Ooh. got this old guard. The greatest that's... year ever. There you go, nice. Oh, three. That's I want Kevin McDougal as a guest. So if there's anything you can do, Lisa. Oh, oh yeah, can, Lisa, I can thank you. Okay, Mac. Yeah. Because I'm my fan go over. What? You just said you can get him? I think I can. I'll make a call. Look at him. He's not on Twitter, fantastic. though. I've been trying to find him. That's because he's smart. Smart. A lot of those guys just don't want to be on social media, but I got some numbers. I'll, I work some magic. Thank right. you, Lisa. You rock. Like the other one we've been trying to get is uh, Rick Meyer, who hasn't answered my emails yet this year, but he answered a lot last year. He just we couldn't make the time. So, but thank yeah. you for getting Alan Ross. And I can week. nudge him a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him we'll buy a bunch of his wine. Yes, which I will, <laughs> as long as it's not over a hundred bucks. I'm good. I nice. will also say one of the guys on the trip was Cam McDaniel. Yes. Oh, yeah. I swear is Superman slash Clark Kent because he's a dreamy guy. The, oh my gosh! The day he got on the bus, he like had a hat on and his glasses and some scruff, and I didn't recognize him at all. <laughs> and then he came down to meet the mayor and was like a totally different person. And I'm like, oh, I swear it is like Superman, <laughs> Clark Kent. <laughs> so he had two. He had two personalities while out there, huh? He did. Super nice guy, though. Okay, well, let's see. Dennis already nailed the uh, name that former NBA yep. player. We talked about Sexy Sam. Now let's get into the game this week. This Lisa, week. are you going to be there? I am not. I'm tired. What? I need a weekend to sleep. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping to see you because I'm going. My girlfriend Heather's going. You got to be hanging with the boys, you know, the usual. But I anyways, know. My so, daughter's coming home this weekend. I haven't seen her since May. So again, I kind of got to oh, do nice. the parent thing. Family yeah. and husbands and daughters are more important than us. So we're, we, yeah. we totally yeah. get it. So we're at home against Tennessee State to start the um, home schedule. And obviously we were saying that uh, Eddie George is the 
head coach. I'm going to start with Lisa. What are you expecting from Notre Dame this coming game? I mean, I expect a repeat of what we saw against Navy. I mean, they're going to come out. Sam's going to throw to everybody, and it should be a shellacking. So, <laughs> you, you think they're going to stick more to passing, or you think they're going to kind of just mix it in again, or are they going to go all run, or what? I mean, I think they should mix it in. Everybody needs to get the reps, and we need to be fine tuning everything to look forward to Ohio State. So everyone needs to have the reps this weekend. And I like your idea of getting everybody the reps. And like Dennis said, the freshmen too. So if this mm-hmm. game is out of hand, you should bring those freshmen in, especially a running back or wherever we need them, and get them that experience in the games. Even if it's Tennessee State, we still want it. We need it. We need that for going up to the next few games. Dennis, what are you uh, looking at for this week? Uh, I, I hope they run, run, run the ball. Um, I mean, yeah, get passes off and stuff. Uh, I think you might see, like, maybe a vanilla game plan, though. Maybe they won't expose too much, meaning, you know, saving stuff for, obviously, so people can't get a lot of things on film from them. Nobody's seen Sam Hartman in the Notre Dame offense. It's always been that slow mesh thing, that system, whatever it is. And uh, I, I so it'll be a big win, and I, I think they should should get, like Lisa said, just echoing her statement, really, is get the players in there and let them play. I, w- I want to see some more of the young linebackers um, like Snead and, and Bowen. Uh, I would, I would oh, yeah. really like to see that. And I'd like to see a couple more sacks. I mean, I know Navy doesn't drop back and pass, so you're not going to get that many sacks, but let's hopefully dial up some, some nice uh, pressures and stuff. Cause it'll be a, di- it'll be a different defense. We'll see, you know, they got to play the, the option. So uh, we won't have that. I'm going to look, look here. I think um... what are you looking at. Navy's quarterbacks last week, three for seven for 43 yards. I think they didn't have an, even a completion. And oh, you just fourth? muted yourself. I know. I saw that. I They didn't get a um, completion to like the fourth quarter or something like that, right? Their first attempt, the first attempt of the season, they had the two receivers run into each other. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's like Keystone Cops. They, they took themselves out. And the DB was just kind of looking at them like, no, thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. that. But yeah, that guy. No, so I was talking thinking. to a Navy alum, and he was saying that the that they have issues in quarterback, like. <laughs> but they, they fired Ken, won. Ken the coach, last, this past off season, because they can't win. But he was like the biggest, the highest winning coach, and they go with the new guy. So I don't, I don't understand the reasoning why they even fired him. But whatever, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, you got to win games. I mean, even if you're. Be- even if you're Navy, I mean, he had a lot of good years under with Navy. Uh, That's what I mean. He had some good years. What was last year? Like three and nine? I don't know. It's probably like, you know, Michigan, Ohio State or whatever. If you don't beat your rival, you're going to get canned. So Army was getting them. I think they even lost to Air Force a couple of times. Probably so. Yeah. Anyway, it'll be a big blowout. Hopefully no injuries. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, let's do this. Yeah. Let's go into our picks. Okay. Mm-hmm. I want to – obviously, we probably all are going to pick the same winner, but I want it numbers. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to go with the exact same score that I had last week. I'm going to go 44-9. to nine. Notre Dame win, obviously. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, Dennis, sorry. Oh, uh, I think I'm going to go pretty high as well. Maybe I'll even go for – I'll go 48 to 10. Okay. Yeah, why not? Well, 48 is what you did last week too, right? I did. I was thinking of 50 burger, but that's one more touchdown. I think they're going to pull Sam midway through the third again, like they did. So we'll see. I think they should if they're up big. Lisa, what are you what are you looking at? What what do you think the final score is going to be? I'm going to say 49 to seven. Nice. Notre Dame. So we all think they might score at least some points. I think Eddie George will get a touchdown though. (laughs) He might put himself in. I mean, I'm sure he can. I'm sure he can still. He was. Uh, He's got he was some really eligibility good. in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> he was really good. He that really good. That dude was amazing. I mean, I would yeah. love to see them against Colorado and then him going against Dion. That would be fun. Prime time. Prime I can't wait. Oh, there's a big game tonight, Utah, Florida. That'll be there fun. Is. So that I yeah. can't believe how many games are on today. Actually, there's a lot of college. Apparently, football, football starts today because nobody knew about the other games this past week. 
I saw commercials or people, I don't, I don't know where I saw, but people on Twitter are like, oh yeah, finally college football starts this week. I'm like, dude, there were like eight games last week. USC yeah. played, the main played. It's like, people are like, oh, well, my team didn't. Like, I get it. Okay. Right. <laughs> it starts for everyone now. Exactly. We all kind of play this week. It's going to be hot in Notre Dame. Looks like oh, it's really? upper 80s, low 90s. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Ooh, whoa. Um, today in Chicago, it was like 76. Yesterday was 71. So it's, it's going to really be nice here. It's going to be hot this weekend. It's going to be in the mid 90s in uh, Chicago and everywhere, too. But wow. it's going to be a little warm one for uh, the game on Saturday. I just hope that I'm in the shade for a little bit and uh, not too inebriated come game time. But you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> So Lisa, anything you want to plug? I know you you have some like stuff we talked about a few weeks ago, you and I outside of here that you have coming up. Is there anything that you can kind of wink, wink, let us know about? Yeah. So I, right before I left for Ireland, I dropped, I have a new book coming out. So right. I wrote a children's book about my dog. I have a French bulldog and her name is Clover. <laughs> well, you need and to know about is- Shadow. Clover goes to Notre Dame. Shocker, right? <laughs> so I wrote a very uh, whimsical tale of my dog and her adventures on campus on a football Saturday. She meets a little squirrel and gets into oh, a little fantastic. trouble and learns about what Notre Dame means. So uh, it's a very, if you're an alum or a fan and you have kids, this is going to be a must have in your library. Maybe I'll get it for the grandkids. I think I just need there to get one. Yeah. I mean, as long as I can get an autographed copy from Lisa Kelly, you know, I am definitely want one. Yeah, grab me one, Evan. I've been collecting endorsements. I have an endorsement I just received today from Mr. Mike Golick. So super oh, wow. excited. He awesome. has a pug and they're big Frenchie fans. I saw him and his wife in Ireland and they were like, absolutely, we'll write you an endorsement. So... Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So you have Ooh. that coming out. And then what were your other books? I know I mentioned one of them earlier, The Echoes of Notre Dame. So I have three books in the Echoes series. Um, the first two are all football, Echoes from the End Zone. Um, there's part one, part two. Um, the third book is Triumphs from Notre Dame. And so I kind of diversified multi-sport. I have football, baseball, basketball, hockey, women's soccer women's track so kind of a little bit of everything um i wrote a cookbook in 2021 so i've got uh 50 football players coaches leprechauns that gave me their favorite recipe so yeah yeah zorich is in there so super fun and um children's book comes out this year and i'm about halfway done writing a notre dame baseball book so that's kind oh, cool. of what, what's on the horizon. Thought I would pick a different sport. And I had a three-hour conversation with Paul Fela a couple weeks ago. Wow. It's been so that's much awesome. fun talking to the baseball guys. Like, their stories are just as good as the football ones are. I well, wish you could also t- tell the story about the Florida State bowl game that he played in. Yeah. He almost won that game, too. So, so it's been well, it's been really fun interviewing these guys. That's so I, cool. I feel like Coach Murphy and Coach Holtz were there at the same time. They started at like the same year, and the trajectories of the two programs are very similar. Like as football was taking off, baseball was taking off, um, and so it's like the Holtz guys have the best Holtz stories. The Coach Murphy guys have, I mean, Murph was kind of a wild card. Like, you know, you you think that Holtz dragging somebody off by the face mask was, you know, edgy. Murph was right there with him, so. Wow. And where can we find these books at? Where can we buy them from you or off of you? Um, So you can, if you want a signed copy, my website's the best place to get it. It's echoesfromnotredamebooks.com. Um, They're at the Notre Dame bookstore. There's signed copies there. I will be signing Ohio State and USC. And then I'm I'm in the process of uh, scheduling stuff for Wake Forest. Um, Because I don't think I'll have children's books 
just quite for Ohio State. So I'll have children's books for USC and then I'll at least have one or two wake. So if you're holiday shopping and you're there in November. Yeah. We're going to be getting on it. And awesome. the cool thing too, lately, uh, Dennis has been doing some writing and so have I. So we've kind of been doing our own little stories. I've been doing personal stories of me and my youth and growing up and Dennis has some stuff. And it's so fu so funny that he and I shared something together like two weeks ago on the same day. I didn't even know that he was doing this stuff. And he's like, hey, I want you to check this out. And he's emailed it to me. And I was like, holy shit, that story is amazing. And he's putting it to video, aren't you? I want to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, we're shooting. Well, it's it's again, because at the beginning of the, our, our first, you know, this is for the season is for Dexter, my, my best friend. He started a film production company um, called Poplar Tree Films. And obviously he passed away on July 1st. So the um, the rest of us, if you will, uh, Kevin, Derek, Reggie, and myself are continuing the mantle. So we're not going to let his dream die because he wrote a, an amazing screenplay and <laughs> just finished it up, right? You know, and he's getting ready to send it out. And then obviously he, he passed. Um, so this was something I've been thinking about since 2020 um, when he was bringing it up and I've finally been able to put pen to paper um, because I have the the story in my head now flushed out. It was really hard, and I didn't just want to write. You know, I wanted it to be a, a relevant uh, story, um, and I think it is. So we'll see. It was really well done, and I was pretty shocked because I didn't know you were you wrote like that at all. Yeah, so, thanks. Oh, Thank shit. you. Yeah, chapter two. It's 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 good. It's moving along. It's really it's it's nice. Um, yeah. And one day I'll have a little uh, photo book with uh, stories as well. So one day that'll come out. I just have to find the time to put it out. So I just want to thank both of you again for being on the show. Dennis, obviously, always every week. Lisa Kelly doing this on Alaska. Yeah, Lisa rocks. Man, the fact that you were able to come on two days after getting back from your uh, yeah, fun little you. trip to Ireland. But that looks so much fun. And you can check her out. Like you said, she she even writes for OneFootDown.com. So they're yeah, all the reader the reader so I, I check out their stuff i usually uh copy and paste and just share it as my own because you know that's what i do actually I've been reading kidding, Lisa Kelly's stuff. you've been writing for a while because i remember you you were you writing when weiss was coach you, then so i started with a site called no coast bias like in yes. 2013 okay then i was at her loyal son's and then I joined one. That's again. where it was. I started yeah, her loyal about sons. Ten years now. I've been blogging. Yeah. So. Uh, That's pretty I cool. I had to recruit her a few years ago, and she was still with one foot down. So maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe one day you could double dip. Who knows? You know, you do some, you do some great work. But at least yeah, I could yeah. promote you, and we can find you on social media. We'll never find Dennis on social media, but we can. Nope. Find you. Um, Lisa, tell him if you want to where to find you on social media. If you want people to follow you. Absolutely. Yeah. My personal Twitter is for Leaf Clover Girl. So the number four Leaf Clover Girl. My books are Echoes from ND. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's all the same Echoes from ND. So you can, I, I'll be posting a lot of Ireland pictures in the next couple of weeks. So kind of stay tuned for that. And you'll be seeing a lot of those pictures and shared to uh, We Are Indie Nation because I love seeing uh, all the pictures that you and like Lee and everybody else that were there, what you guys have done. It's been a blast. So again, thank you both, Lisa, Dennis, for being on this week's episode of We Are Indie Nation podcast. Got it. Went into week number, well, it'll be week number one, but it's our week number two. So we're going to be playing Tennessee State at home, Notre Dame. We've all picked them to win. So Check us out. We're all over the social media, too. We are ND Nation on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our uh, YouTube is Badass Productions, but the playlist is under We Are ND Nation. Episodes drop Fridays mornings. I'm trying to get them on at 8 o'clock in the morning as long as I have enough time to get them done. So yeah. my apologies, Dennis, if I don't, but I should be able to today. We got cats waiting now. It's exciting. I know. We got people like actually talking good about it. <laughs> kind of nice and yeah. we get some pretty epic guests on so you can't i know on. we're getting some nice guests it's pretty so until next week yep. you know what to do here and yes. kind of change it up this year i remember you last year you kind of saw this but we changed it up just for yeah because yeah. of his buddy who passed away by yeah, the he's way he's a michigan guy so we can't say uh 
and you know, we're not dogging Michigan this year. So this past Saturday, a friend of mine who was a big Notre Dame fan, who I actually saw a couple times at games, his name was Jason Osringer. He had a heart attack two weeks ago. Oh, was man. in the hospital for a week. Came home Thursday. Passed away Saturday morning. Oh so, man, well this for this me, is for you then. For me, I'm gonna thank him for everything he did. He actually wanted to be a part of this too at some point. Unfortunately, he's not going to make it. 44 years old, man. Oh, fuck. Who, yeah. That's awful. Sucks. And well, think about it. I was 46 when I had my heart attack two years ago. So rest was, in power. You say Dan? No, his name was Jason. Jason. Jason, was, sorry. Rest in power, Jason. It was amazing. And uh, until next week, I'm going to say go Irish. Go Irish and fuck the University of Spoiled Children. Go Irish. <laughs> Oh my God, that's so good. <laughs>